I'm Sam Chang. I'm the director of the Iowa Writers Workshop and I teach fiction workshop here. And Tamika and I, Tamika Cage Connolly and I, are here today to discuss the admissions procedure for fiction writers uh, who are interested in applying to the program. I teach fiction writing here and I graduated from the workshop in 2018. Tamika has served many times as a first reader for fiction manuscripts and I thought it would be helpful for us to talk together because our processes work together. How about we start here? What did you submit with your application when you applied to the workshop? Okay, I applied to the workshop in the dark ages <laughs> um, and I applied with uh, three stories, one of which I think was a complete story one of which I think was an interesting, now in retrospect, I think was an interesting fragment. And another one that was a, a story that was fine, but not as good as the first story. I applied with 71 pages of my novel in progress. Wow. When I applied to the program, I was incapable of writing 71 pages. All of my stories were under 14 pages long. Really? Okay. In 12-point Geneva. <laughs> That's funny. No, but, but I think it's good for people to know that they can apply with a longer excerpt and with shorter stories. Right. Right? This is one of the big issues that um, I think people are curious about when they're applying to our program. They see that we have a few requirements in fiction about what we want to see from them and then we also have a page sort of page range that we suggest um, and I think sometimes people who apply are curious to know like what that means. I think one of the things that might trip people up is that the, the page number vis-a-vis -vis the number of stories, right? I think if we just start with saying submit your very best work I think that's just the first place to start. And then we can also say... Um, there is another thing. You have to submit more than one thing. If you're submitting part of a novel, it needs to be more than one chapter. Right. And if you're submitting a story, it needs to be more than one story. And it is also totally okay, legit, to submit one story and a novel one itself. chapter. Right. Question, why do we allow people to submit three things? Why don't we just require two? Because we're a little bit sort of mellow about this and we want to see your best work. If you think you have three stories that are your best, we want to see them. If right. we want, we don't have a limit on how many stories or how long they need to be um, individually, but we do hope that your manuscript will come in under 80 pages. Here's my question. Have you been seeing a lot of manuscripts that are like, exactly 80 pages lately? More, more, more. And, and sometimes even more than the three. How many stories do we ask for again? Three, no, we no ask more, for two. For two, we ask and, for but two. we will read a third one, right? I've, oh, I've no, read, we'll read, I've read everything. Than... Well, what I mean by that is like, if we get, as I did, I received at least two applications that had seven or eight stories each. Yes, I too have and read And I read every one of them, like right, of course. Yes. But I think what we can let people know is that that's not what that's not a requirement that no. you submit seven or eight stories. We will read every last one of them, but it does not really affect the outcome of the application. Do you want to hear my theory about this? Yes. Please. My theory is that very rarely does submitting a ton of stories actually help you. I think that's right because I can't say that. As a matter of fact, I felt like. One of those stories in particular, had, it, had, that, had the author stayed with that one story longer, it would have made the application stronger as opposed to submitting all of these extremely short stories that you couldn't really get a feel for because you'll be pulled out of them so quickly. That's interesting. Yeah. I mean, my take on it is, is a short short that's really strong is excellent. I agree. But a bunch of short shorts that have varying quality make the writer look inconsistent, whereas if they choose their best ones, right. then um, they'll probably do, you know, do better. I completely agree with that. I think that the key is to find sort of the balance between um, sort of amount of work and quality of work. Yeah. 
I think that's true. It is true that some people apply with four sort of full-length short stories and they're all quite good, um, but that's very rare, honestly. Um, I, yeah, no, that makes sense. So including a lot of stuff can actually hurt you. <laughs> However, um, what about your manuscript, for example, that had 70 pages in it? Like, right. And you got in with bells on, so it's possible that in your case with the novel, it really needed that many pages to show um, what it was doing. Well, I felt like my whole point was to show that I could hold a narrative arc, that I could, I could hold a story for multiple chapters from, I think I submitted the introduction to the novel into maybe, mm, must have been chapter six or chapter seven. Um, and so I just felt like this has to show that I can sustain this content. Um, and my whole hope was to show that if I can write for 71 pages, I could finish a novel and that I could be really good at learning how to do it better. That was my whole goal. And I think that's something that maybe we could talk about too, is that it really is about having the opportunity to become better. And so what do you have that will make us see that you have this talent and that you can grow here? Interesting. So you're saying that something's like perfect and kind of rigid is less exciting to you when you look at manuscripts? Well, sometimes. I mean, if, if I, I mean, when I read something and it seems like it's really amazing, obviously I'm really excited about that because I'm thinking, wow, this is, this is special. But also if there's imagination and ambition and a willingness to try something, then that will open up a space for consideration just as well, too. Yes. Um, I should explain uh, what our process is here. Tamika and other first readers read the entire manuscript right. and then they, they rate it and critique it. Um, each manuscript gets read twice. So you would be one of two readers on any given manuscript that you're working on. Right. And then I then read all of the manuscripts Which and the amazing. comments. Amazing. Well, it's kind of, it's kind of exhausting and time consuming. And so it makes it impossible for us to comment on individual manuscripts after, um, after the process is over because I'm busy trying to catch up with the rest of my life. But um, what happens is that there are two stages of the process, and then there's a third stage. Um, in the first stage, two readers read each manuscript, Tamika being one of these readers. Right. And then in the second stage, I read the manuscript, and then I choose between 50 and 60, depending on what is there. And then the faculty members, in, including our permanent and visiting faculty members that semester, read the 50 or 60 finalists, and then they vote. Um, the interesting thing about this process for me is that every year the faculty vote um, is different because we have different people teaching as visitors. Mm -hmm. For example, this semester we have Rosa Navoyo Rosa Schuma and Garth Greenwell teaching, and they were in, in the reading, the admissions reading process. But, you know, next year it'll be different. Um, what do you think that does to kind of have um, it rotate a little bit like that because the visiting faculty get a voice in who comes in? Like, how do you think that affects, you know, who we end up admitting? I mean, I think that as a program, it keeps us fresh right. because we don't have the same people reading every year. It also mixes up our aesthetic so that we have, uh, you know, a very sort of a uh, flexible aesthetic, Yeah, if that makes sense. No, it does, it does. Um, we don't, what we don't wanna do is to become the same old program every year. Right. We actually are um, the opposite of having like one thing that we like. Yeah. Um, and this brings me to a su subject that is often discussed here at the workshop and also um, I think among applicants to the program, which is, are we only interested in a certain kind of fiction? Do we penalize people who apply if they submit graphic novels or science speculative. fiction, speculative fiction? 
Um, what, how, do you feel that you read a speculative manuscript differently than you would read, say, a realistic manuscript? I don't, I don't. I'm looking for the same thing in terms of what's the story, where's the heart, does this author understand pain point and how you can use pain, right, to explore craft. I mean, it, it, to me, it's the same question. It's also the reason why in my classes, and, and I see this here, you know, in our program too, why I, I allow students to write science fiction and speculative and fantasy yeah. if they choose to. And so what I like about our program is that um, that space is open. And we have faculty members like Kevin Brockmeyer, for example, who comes and who visits, who, who teaches. Um, and I, I haven't seen anyone not be welcomed uh, to explore craft in any genre that they're interested in, not in any of my workshops since I've been here. That's right. I think that the program has way back in history been a place that welcomes science fiction. So one, one of the um, most well-known visiting faculty were here with, um, is Kurt Vonnegut. Right. And when he was teaching here, he was part of this process as well. And when Kevin teaches here, Kevin Brockmeyer is part of this process as well. Uh, Karen Russell taught here and was also part of the process. Um, and we, we readers who are on the permanent faculty um, are pretty open to whatever is interesting. Um, it's, I will try to explain the process that I have of reading manuscripts. Um, it's a daunting process. We get about a thousand fiction manuscripts every year and we don't have a very small limit in length and so there's a lot of reading to do. Um, what eventually happens is that uh, one can sort of be, ter be reading the pages and thinking, this is perfectly good. Um, there's not a whole lot wrong with it. The writer is, um, you know, talented. But every once in a while, a manuscript jumps off the page. Right. And uh, I have a feeling that there's a human being on the other side of the page with something to say, urgent to say, and that they're equally committed to finding a way in which to say it. Right. Yeah, it's like kind of miraculous when that happens. Yeah. Because, I mean, there are so many to read, uh, first, first round, then yeah. second again, right? So when that, but when that happens, you know it, and you can feel it. It kind of feels like there are goosebumps, and I uh -huh. think that's, that's a, a big part of that. And what I found is that those authors are authors who are really interested in story and oh, it, it doesn't end up being about and often they're not exceptionally long either I mean sometimes they're sub substantial it, it means that they're it's essentially the pages are essential right it feels like every sentence I'm thinking about one particular application right oh. now for example every sentence every page made sense to me oh, that's that interesting. it didn't feel like there were too many it didn't feel like there were too few I think each page, there were three stories and they averaged about 20 pages each. And that sort of made, that made a lot of sense for this particular author and the stories they were trying to write. That's so interesting. You, you feel then that story is one of the key, key elements for you. But it's interesting because when I'm reading, I'm often looking, for, I'm often sort of struck by, uh, amazing passages. Language is really yeah. important too. I mean, right? So, I mean, somebody who knows what a story is, you know, sure. right? But language is really important too, because I mean, that's the thing that sets us apart as writers is that out of all the people in the world who want to write a story, this person's language doesn't sound anything like anybody else's. And when that happens, I think that's goose pimply too. Yes. You know? Yeah. 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 I mean, good fiction actually creates a physical reaction. I agree. It's visceral. Yeah. And we get really excited about, yeah. <laughs> about those, you know. Um, it's definitely exciting. Yes. It's actually my favorite part of my job is, is admissions. Really? Yeah. You know what? That doesn't surprise me. Does that help when you have to read all 1,000? Because, you know, people are floored. I know people are <laughs> floored to, to imagine that everyone gets read 
twice and then you read everybody's because I, I mean I've read 200 up to I've read over 200 altogether I've read over 400 I think or about 400 the you, past two the, yeah the, the last, last couple years. years right but you read almost three times that every year I do read a lot of stories um yeah, I think what makes it interesting to me is that moment when I when I find something, right. and it, it's often a surprise. Yeah. I'll think, oh, I wasn't expecting to find this story about World War II compelling in quite this way. Exactly. Or I just read a, a manuscript this year about two women who become friends and then lovers, and it was just it felt completely fresh to me. Right. Um, I think the strongest writing. Uh, makes whatever its material is new. And um, that's just really an unforgettable experience. Right. It's sort of, um, I guess, amazing for me to be on this side of things. You know, when you mail in your application, you, you don't anticipate that you're going to get a chance to have something to do with who, who comes here to study. And there's such a rich, rewarding experience to read for the program and to think about you know, how can we help people out there who want to come here uh, feel confident about what they, what they submit? Well, what year, what year did you start? I'm trying to remember. 2016. 2016. Yeah. So that's actually not that long ago. I know, but it feels like it a little bit. It feels like I've been here for like 10 years, to be honest. But I think that's just because of the richness of the experience. Oh, I'm I've glad had. you had a good experience. No, it's been a blessing. It's been like... Mm, the journey of a lifetime, honestly. <laughs> There's nothing like it. There's nothing That's like great. it. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Sure, thank you. I'm glad that you're going to start your <laughs> your new job as a professor. Oh in, yeah, I guess I should fall. say that I have a new job. So uh, you won't be doing this. I, I know, next I year. know, I know, I know. So I just took a job as assistant professor of creative writing at Oxford College of Emory University in Atlanta, Georgia. Even though I have a PhD, I needed the credential of an MFA to teach creative writing. What was it about the experience here in the MFA program that you found helpful? Um, I think it's so many. I'm trying to figure out where to start. I guess I'll start with the f what I wanted when I came here was to become a better writer of fiction. I, I wanted to learn how to make everything about being a fiction writer better. So, I mean, I learned more about plot character development, dialogue, every, all that stuff gets checked off the list, right? So I consider myself, um, I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know how to measure it, right? But I can, except to say, I can do things now in a paragraph, in a story, in a chapter that I couldn't even imagine or dream of doing before, Whoa. right? <laughs> so that is, it, it's like I, I set my mind to it and then I have the tools to actually achieve it. So that's, I mean, that's life changing, right? As an artist to say, I have dreams that I didn't even know I could have or were possible. Um, and then I gained a community here. So my readers are here. I mean, you know, I, I gained a mentor in you and also in the great Margot Livesey, who yes. just, there's no person like her in the world. And then my best friend too, um, Derek Nero, who graduated in 2016 who is also one of my readers. So having readers who will be reading my work from now until, you know, I'm like, I guess dead. I mean, you know what I mean? So that, I mean, that's transformative. And then the joy of, of writing in a community like Iowa City that respects yeah. and loves the literary arts so much. So I've been able to do so much within the workshop, in the English department that, you know, where I've, I've worked and also in the city too. So I've, I've been able to cultivate a whole life as a literary artist here um, at the University of Iowa and then also in, in the community as well. So that's just, I don't, I don't think there's any other place in the world that this would have been possible for me. That's great. Yeah. That's really great. Um, so is there one piece of advice you'd give to applicants who are trying to decide what to submit? I think... You used the word bef earlier that I really loved, and that's the word urgency. What is the urgency in your art, and how can you show that urgency with as much compassion 
for yourself as a writer and the characters that you're writing about. And I think you can be merciful and say, I believe this is my best work that I have available to me without burdening yourself with, you know, it has to be this many pages. It has to be this yeah. many story, story, stories, right? So staying within some of the guidelines that we ask for um, is a fantastic way of, of really pushing yourself to say within these guidelines, I can achieve um, you know, a compelling, um, as, as compelling of, of an application as I possibly can. So you, you think of the guidelines as a constraint, um, a, kind of, a kind of creative constraint? In a good way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? I yeah. Mean, yeah. Right. Like, like um, I mean, absolutely. That it can serve you, that, those, that, that it can serve you and focus you, which is what coming to this place requires. I mean, it is, you know, I'm a person with three degrees, and it is the most intense degree program I've been a part of, and that is because the focus is on the art. The focus is on becoming better, and I think this is a great way to start that process if you believe this is where you want to be. I think if there was one piece of advice I would have to give to applicants, um, I would say to try to choose your best work. You don't have to put in a ton of work. You don't have to put in a ton of stories or pages. Um, remember that those of us who are on the other side of it are receptive and interested in what you have to say and that you don't really have to impress us with um, sort of bells and whistles. Uh, we're really here to read your work and um, we wish everybody the best. Um, our program is not a small program but we do you know, only choose a small percentage of the people who apply. Many people apply multiple times and then get in, uh, graduate, go on and have meaningful um, lives as writers and, you know, published writers. And, uh, you know, this is just one step of the way. So I guess I'd wish everyone the best. Me too. I wish everybody the absolute best when they apply here. <laughs>